2017 and August of 2018, I have lost 140 pounds. In this photo, it was actually 260 pounds, but my high weight was 280 and here I am 140. And so I've been able to maintain this weight for nearly a year now, and I've used a combination of low-carb keto-like dieting and intermittent fasting. And I'm gonna be talking about that throughout this, but one of the things we talk about in the Eat Like a Bear group on Facebook is, of course, what we're eating, and I'm a big proponent of what I call the big salad, and one of those key salads is coleslaw, and so one of the questions has been how how do how big is big and there's been questions about how much does the salad weigh because what we're realizing is that if you use something like this okay this is really finely chopped and so the bulk is going to be different than if you start with a head of cabbage so one of the things i'm going to do today is actually weigh this versus the half a head of cabbage that i can easily eat and compare those and um, also show you a stuffed pepper that I pulled out of the freezer. And this is just kind of how I'm surviving, you know, from day to day. And um, I, I do a lot of batch cooking and bulk cooking so that on today, like on, on a day like today, when I don't really feel like cooking, I can just grab something out of the freezer. So I'm gonna show you that as well. So let's see, let me get started. So first of all, the peppers, Let's see, we have a few people here already. Hey, you guys. So I'm just getting used to this YouTube interface. So leave a comment or something if you're here because part of what I'm learning is like how to even read the comments on this. This is so ridiculous. Okay, so, but let's get started with the cabbage and see if we can actually figure out how to show you. So in a future life, I will have um, two cameras and then it'll just be all set and ready to go. Alrighty, so what we've got is the big, the big question. So like people are using a mix like this, which is a totally convenient way to make a salad, all right? And saying, wow, I cannot eat an entire giant mixing bowl of this because it's like two or three bags. And so then I think, wow, well maybe I can't eat that much either. So how much am I really eating? I typically start with a head of cabbage. And so with a head of cabbage like this, this is kind of a nice bulky head of cabbage. There's some, you know, cause some, some heads of cabbage, I mean, they're not all equal. Some are kind of, kind of, you know, I don't know, hollow <laughs> and very lightweight. So with this, this is very bulky. And you can see nice and bulky. I probably, I'm probably eating a half a head. So um, the question is, what does that weigh? versus what does this weigh so let's look at that first of all and i happen to have a scale right here so we can actually weigh this stuff and we have a head of cabbage weighing in at or a half a head one pound and a half an ounce okay so basically this half a head of cabbage is one pound. We don't really have to weigh this because we know it's 14 ounces. So this is almost a pound. So that is to say that if I typically eat a half a head of cabbage like this in my big coleslaw, that this one bag, a 14 ounce bag of chopped cabbage is similar. But what I'm kind of, so this is a similar quantity. What I'm curious about, and I'm gonna do a quick rough chop, because I'm gonna show you guys. I, I rarely buy this, especially if I'm home, because it's just so easy to chop up the cabbage. But what I'm curious about is what the um, bulk looks like in the bowl. So let me just do a real quick chop on this thing. Okay, so I have two mixing bowls of similar sizes here, or pretty much the same size. And so with my stuff chopped up in here,
so for you guys just coming on, what I'm doing is showing like the difference, like when we talk about like eating a giant mixing bowl full of something like coleslaw, you know, not all things are equal. So I just did a, a, a quick chop on this cabbage and it turns out it nearly fills the bowl. Okay, so now a very similar quantity. In fact, this is two ounces less than that cabbage I just put in the bowl. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so visually, uh, this might not be that obvious. So, you know, these are similar, but a bigger chop on the cabbage is going to lead to more bulk, okay? But it's basically a very similar amount of cabbage. And so, so I think, and, and, and there, are, there are cabbage mixes, this is a cabbage mix, but there are some that are even chopped smaller. And so that stuff's gonna pack up in this bowl even more. And, and, and so at the end of the day, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, if you can't, you know, eat an entire bowl full because it's really going to be defined by what's in there. Like the broccoli slaws that you can buy, those are very condensed. And so you're going you're, you're gonna to eat like a third of a bowl of something like a broccoli slaw probably. So it does matter, like in terms of bulk, like how it's chopped. And so basically... I don't know, the take home is I eat, I do eat a lot of cabbage. So I, 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 eat, I eat a lot of cabbage, you guys, but um, maybe not as, as much as some people are kind of thinking. I don't know, I don't know. So anyway, here's a little comparison. You guys have seen me make the, um, the coleslaw dressing before. And so I'm gonna just make it again real quick because there were some people who said, whoa, I never realized it was that easy. And since it does just take a minute, let me just pop that on here too. Cause you know, I'm about to eat this coleslaw. <laughs> so I need to make this anyway. So here we go. It's just like half of a yogurt, half portion of a yogurt. And there's there's a recipe in the description for this, this um, coleslaw dressing. I don't even measure it. Ever. <laughs> not anymore so half mayonnaise half yogurt some salt and pepper let's see get some salt in there some pepper in there that's it some apple cider vinegar you know let me give this a little shake you know apple cider vinegar there's the sediment at the bottom and that's actually like the, the good stuff it's the mother the culture in there Okay, so the apple cider vinegar gives it a tangy flavor, and then I put a sweetener in it. This is just a powdered stevia, and this gives it that sweet, tangy balance that just is so great with a coleslaw. Alrighty, so that's probably about right. And then, really, you just mix it all up, and you adjust it to taste. So taste it especially for salt, but um, for sweetener, I find as well. And then that's, that's pretty much it and then you're gonna put it on your, your dressing. If you want it to be more, um, I don't know, liquid, you could add a little, little more apple cider vinegar if it's not too, too tangy. Sometimes the yogurt will have a little extra whey in it. Okay, so like mine does right now, so I'm gonna pour some of that in there, and that will get it to be a little bit more pourable like a dressing as opposed to a dip. But I don't worry about that too much. It tends to work, work itself out on the coleslaw anyway. And so I'll just be adding that to my cabbage after this video is over when I'm eating I'll add this to my cabbage and that will be my coleslaw so seriously y'all that's the evidence I eat a very big coleslaw so I'll be eating that today all right so hey um who so you guys you bear members could someone share this to the group so people can find it because I wasn't able to get a link before so into the Facebook group um let me show you Real quick, I'm going to get this started cooking, and then we'll do a chat. But um, I'm going to show you these peppers. And so this is just something I made, oh, two days ago. These are stuffed peppers, pasilla peppers, which is what you use for a um, relleno. But this is not a relleno. It's just kind of inspired by a relleno. So this is a, a pepper. The pasilla pepper gets roasted and you, you take the skin off. So I did that and it's just stuffed with a taco meat and cheese. And then I froze it. So then I have a tray. <laughs> These look terrible, but they're delicious. Oh my gosh. I have a tray of peppers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat 
two of these. Boy, I'm hungry today. I'm going to eat two of these, but the rest of these I'm going to take off the tray. I'm going to put in a bag. So I'm going to just do that now. Put these in a bag. And these will go back into the freezer. And then I will have these for another day, you know, like magic. So, okay, yeah, I have one that's kind of torn up. I'll, I'll use, I'll cook that up today. Put the rest of these that are in better shape, I'll put them right in the freezer today. I'm gonna walk over and do that right now because these will end up defrosting right on my island if I don't. All right. So that's cool and that's what makes all this very instant when you actually need to cook. Okay, or when you, you know, you're sort of desperate or whatever. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for these peppers is they're frozen and that's all right because I'm gonna just warm them up while we do the rest of our video, but I'm gonna show you how I do it, which is just, so I got this little hot plate here so I can show you, okay. This is just warming up now, so who knows how that's gonna, it, it's not gonna, eh, I should have had it warming. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make like a little gravy for this. And like the chili relleno makes a certain sauce, and this is kind of inspired by the chili relleno sauce, but it's definitely not a traditional approach. This, okay, this is bacon grease. <laughs> okay, which um, I happen to have some, so what the heck? And as this heats up, we'll just let that heat up. And um, let's do this. Hey, leave some comments on here. Let, let's let this heat up a little bit. But put some, pop some comments in here and um, some questions. And we'll do that. And as this heats up, I'll show you my process for making what's kind of a gravy. And, um, okay, I'm going to see. Let's see. I'm looking now for comments. This interface is just very different from Facebook's. And so I'm trying. Oh, oh okay. Hey, Lanita, good morning. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's afternoon in Florida, so yeah, okay, good afternoon, <laughs> good afternoon there, and um, gosh, this just, I just have to get really used to this, um, it's strange. Duncan, so would it make a difference if you use the same weight and made crack slaw? Um, hey, so crack slaw is what, what, Duncan? So, um, you know, I've seen, I've seen that floating around, but haven't ever really paid attention to it, but Again, trying to find these comments. You know, you'd think it would be straightforward. You know, I think the thing is with all this, eat until you're full and, you know, and eat eat something that's healthy that you're going to want to eat that's going to really fill you up. And that's going to be the, 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 the key thing. But people have asked, like, about the quantity of the salad that I'm eating and have wondered if, you know, because they'll get, like, a, a packaged cabbage that's really, really finely chopped. You know, there's some, some of those coleslaw mixes have a really fine chop to them. And so in those cases, people are saying, there's no way I could eat a giant mix mixing bowl of that. Well, okay. <laughs> now, I mean, I kind of get why, because it is a lot more cabbage. And so the way it's chopped is going to make a difference. And so just kind of, you know, eat it until you're full. And I have a really big stomach, apparently. And so, you know, there's that. Uh, but people have wondered about that. So I thought I'd just take my chance and go ahead and, and, and weigh it. And so Pam is asking, can you substitute sour cream for yogurt? Absolutely. So, um, you know, and and some people just maybe do completely like a mayonnaise thing in there, but I, I like the balance of like the mayonnaise with something dairy-ish, um, but you can be totally flexible. Sometimes I'll use a ricotta and, um, oh, and sometimes I'll use, yeah, like a sour cream. Okay, so we have a little bit, this is getting a little bit warm now. I don't want this to smoke. And so we're on for our gravy. Let me just, I'm just kind of cooling this pan off a little bit. This thing, it's one of these electrical um hot plate things hmm. just cooling it okay so what what i'm gonna do it, this is um the bacon grease and i am just adding a um because this is a sort of taco flavor approach here with these peppers i'm just adding a bunch of um taco seasoning to this that's it and then I'm going to, you know, let's cook that up a little bit. I'm going to add just a touch of cream. Okay. Just a touch. Give it a little extra richness. Oh, 
Oh, I see already I'm missing a lid for this. Okay, but, but notice, here's the key. This keeps it so simple. These are frozen. These are completely frozen. All right, that's it. Now I might try to fuss and get some of this sauce on top, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get a lid for this so that it doesn't completely dry up on me. Here we go. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna turn it down and I'm gonna just let this basically like simmer. These things will defrost in here and I'll be able to get some of the sauce up on them here in a bit, especially if I don't let it completely evaporate and dry up. So I'm gonna just move this to the side, but that's it. So my lunch is cooking right now, <laughs> right here. <laughs> I'll eat it here in a little bit. And it's really that simple because basically on days that I, you know, felt more like cooking, I make some stuff for the freezer. And so that's what those peppers are from. And then I, I just, I make my salad fresh and, and I have like a really quick, easy meal basically. So, okay, let me, um, get this readjusted if I can and see if I can find some, <laughs> some questions here in YouTube. You know, it, it is interesting to just try these, these different, okay, okay, let's see, Duncan. Like an egg roll in a bowl, yeah, okay, oh, the egg roll in a bowl, I know that one. And so, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know, just eat, eat the quantity that you want. Oh, and, and that's cooked, and so, or at least like lightly steamed, and in that case, yeah, so I don't know. I, I I very much am just a like eat until full person. So in a case like that, I think that's a really great dish. That's a really great concept. You get all of, you know, you get your greens and stuff in there. You get all those flavors. And yeah, you're definitely not gonna be eating like the big mixing bowl full of egg roll in a bowl. Um, but you can get a sense as you're cooking it, how much is in there and then how much it cooks up and you know, it's, it mushes down quite a bit, quite a bit, so yeah. Um, let's see. And let's see, Lanita had the Big Mac salad the other night and it was absolutely delicious. Okay. Have you, who has not tried the Big Mac salad? Then that's your assignment. <laughs> good, good for you, Lanita, because it is amazing. It is really amazing. It is not that difficult. So in terms of like the freezer foods, that's one of the things I do is I keep a meat that's a, um, uh, just a ground beef that's just lightly seasoned, just usually with garlic, salt, and pepper, so it's just really basic. And then I freeze it in baggies that are kind of sh smushed so that they like stack flat. And that is the main meat topping for the Big Mac salad. And then the other key thing is making the dressing. And the dressing isn't too hard to make at all. It just, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's a little harder than like this coleslaw dressing because it just has some more ingredients and like I'll usually chop the pickles. So it takes like a little bit more time, but this is not a lot of time. And so what I typically do is I'll make all of that. I'll make extra dressing and then I'll have it on different kinds of things that are kind of Big Mac flavor inspired. And you guys, it's delicious. The Big Mac thing, I mean, I haven't had a Big Mac for a very, very, very long time, but um, the flavors, you can't deny. That's some good stuff. And so get it all up on that lettuce and hey, it's pretty cool. Okay. I haven't, and, I haven't had a Big Mac ever. Okay, and Lin, Lanita, yeah, <laughs> Alistair, come here, come here, Alistair. Okay, so Alistair has his announcement. He's never had a Big Mac ever. in his life. Okay. I, have, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't had any food at McDonald's. He's never eaten at McDonald's in his life. Okay, so um, the last like American child. <laughs> okay, Lanita, you take care. And boy, I know about bad bad internet signals. My golly. Okay, and so um, yeah, Duncan sautéed ground beef and slaw with Asian spices. Yeah, so that does sound like the the egg roll in a bowl, and it sounds delicious. It's making me hungry. But I'm smelling my peppers right here, so I'm kind of feeling extra hungry. Let, let's see, so Lisa did a big salad last night and I was sitting at the table for an hour to get it all in. Should I stop when I'm full or do I really need to finish? Yeah, hey Lisa, you know, you stop when you're full. I mean, you know, for sure. Uh, sometimes in a case like that, especially if you're doing one meal, maybe you need a little more time. I, I say one meal in an hour, really more to like draw the boundaries because I definitely find that if I have like five hours, I'm eating throughout the five hours. It's, 
you know, I need boundaries. I need boundaries. And so like that one hour was my boundary. But what if it's two hours? Because that's when you need the, the amount of time you need to get your calories in, then you should take the two hours. But I, I think the key is to like be mindful about are we gaming ourselves about how much we're eating and what we're doing in those hours? Because like five hours, that's a lot of like rope out there, right? The whole thing about um, if you get enough rope, some of us do rope tricks and some of us hang ourselves. So I'm out there hanging on a rope if I have too much. And so, um, hey, you guys, so what other questions do you have? I am, and um, I'm going to be on um, Facebook Live tonight at six o'clock. And, you know, I think I'm going to try to prepare a little something on Facebook, but also really talk about intention. And that's where this whole like one hour comes in and having a framework and kind of making that promise to yourself and really staying focused. Um, intention and um, dis discipline is such an important part of all this, obviously. And the way to stay disciplined over many, many months, which we need to do to lose a lot of weight, it, um, it, it really does come down to intention in, in, and some of the best ways to do that are actually writing and speaking out your intention. And so we have people coming into the group and speaking out their intentions, which is perfect, but also journaling. So writing down your intention. Alistair yeah. has been working a bit on a journal as well. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing um, <coughs> right a, a live video, uh, 6 p.m. U.S. time. U.S. or how about Pacific? P yeah, Pacific. Pacific, that's tonight. That's right. And so, Alistair, are you going to be in that video tonight? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll talk about intention. But, hey, you guys, so um, let's see. Did you cook the peppers before you stuff them and freeze them? Yeah, hey, so what you do with these pasilla peppers is you roast, you roast them. And so then they're really like well cooked <laughs> because you have to remove the skin. The skin's kind of tough. And so once they're roasted, that skin separates off really easily. So you roast them, you pull the skin off when they're cool, and then you stuff them. And so they're already cooked. And so then I stuff them with cooked meat and cheese. And so then all the parts are cooked. And then I put them on this tray. So I showed this before with all those, the frozen peppers on it and they were, I put them in the freezer. So it's like a tray freezing method. That was two days ago. And so I just took it out this morning and cooked two up and or not cooked, but rewarmed them. They were frozen and they're probably not frozen anymore. And then, um, I froze the rest in a bag. And so the, the bag then, they're all flat because they froze on the tray. And so they're still flat and they can, you know, kind of get popped in the freezer a little bit easier. But let me just see how my, oh. <laughs> okay, let me turn this off. <laughs> okay, I will say that my sauce, doing a live video on this like electric thing isn't maybe the best strategy for cooking. I'm going to show you the sauce got all burned. So what I'll probably do is start again, make a new sauce, retrieve my peppers from here. Okay, I'll show you. What the heck? I'm going to retrieve my peppers from this mess. It looks a little bit too dark and crispy for my taste. And then I'll put the peppers into the fresh sauce. I'll do that after. I'll do that on a regular stove. <laughs> so, okay. But, but... It did was a success in terms of defrosting. And so that's my point too. You know, I think we think a lot about like, oh, I can't, I need to eat now, but the stuff's frozen in the freezer. So much of what I do is I just pull it right out frozen and then just warm it up and that defrosts it. Most of the things I, I eat, I do that way. Um, you know, especially if it's just for me and you know, things like we talked about the Big Mac salad, like that ground beef. You could defrost it right on, right on the stove and just like a really low temperature, let it defrost and you're done. You're ready to eat it. So that it, it's that, that simple. It's that simple if you've put some time aside to do some of the batch cooking. And, you know, things like cooking up ground beef in, you know, four pound amounts or something isn't that difficult. Um, and especially just kind of a light seasoning or any kind of seasoning. If you have the seasoning around and you're kind of prepared, it's it's just not that difficult. And so you do it all. You make the mess, you freeze it, and you're done. And then all those other days, you have all of these little things that are just ready for you to just 
eat, eat easily. So that's, that's definitely my strategy, especially uh, with having a lot of times I'll eat something different from my kids. And so I can kind of mix and match all these things according to, you know, what people are eating or not eating basically. And so, um, and Pam is asking if you use eggs or an omelet for your protein, how many eggs would you use? Three probably. Um, I have eaten a four egg omelet before. You know, some days I wake up and I just feel like for whatever reason, I just need a lot of protein. And so I have had a four egg omelet. It's, it's pretty big, <laughs> but you know, if that's my main or that is my protein for the day, I don't think it's that much. And it, it, so it just depends. My omelets will typically have um, broccoli or cauliflower in them, some kind of vegetable like that. And I typically put as much in as I can. You know, you can't put too, too much in an omelet or it will all just fall apart. But I try to kind of maximize that. And sometimes I will also have a side salad with an omelet. Now, a four egg omelet, I don't know that I could even fit a side salad in with that. <laughs> but so it really depends on how, how I feel. But more likely I would eat a three egg omelet with some salad than in like a giant four egg omelet. So anyway, bas basically how I, how I feel. Um, Kathy's asking what kind of yogurt. Yes, so I um, I typically get a, um, a full fat yogurt. I'm just noticing this one is actually a non-fat. So my husband bought it, it's in the fridge, so I was just using it. But I'll typically just look at the carbohydrate content. This, you know, the, the non-fat high, is higher in carbs. And um, at this point in my like maintenance, I'm less concerned about that. So that's why I hadn't even noticed like what this particular one was. But typically, I'm going for like the full fat, the full fat yo um, yogurts. But you want to look at the the carb content. Just just give it a little check and make sure you know what you're you're getting into there. And um, let's see. So the the mayonnaise that I use. So Debbie's asking. I use this avocado oil mayonnaise for the coleslaw and actually this yogurt is just like Kirkland's. So this is a Costco brand of Greek yogurt. And this is one of the, like, basically, my husband is the Costco shopper. And so he, he got this and you know, it's good, it's good. Um, okay, let's see, what else? And then the apple cider vinegar, I used this. All right, so hey, other questions. Let me say a little bit more about what we do for people who are maybe new or going to find this. Um, so low carb, um, keto-ish eating. So with the big salad approach and eating something that looks a lot like this every day with some protein on it, um, we're maybe not stereotypical keto. Um, there's sort of a, like almost like a cartoon vision of keto, which is like everyone's just like eating bacon or something. And so this looks different but um, it's low carb. And so basically you're gonna get into ketosis and burn your body fat as fuel, that's the goal. But um, a game changer approach for me was not just going low carb, but also doing um, time restricted eating. And so a lot of people call this intermittent fasting. And what it is is so say this is a 24 hour period, this whole circle, and time restricted eating is eating in a certain time in that 24 hours. Okay, so well, let me start with this one. This is what my husband has done, and this is like my maintenance. This is what my maintenance looks like. So if this is the 24 hour window, I would be eating only in five hours in that window. The rest of the 24 hours, I'm not eating. I'm not snacking. I'm not consuming anything that's gonna affect my blood sugar. So I might have coffee, but, um, all of my eating is here in and and this five hour window might shift around a little bit from day to day depending on my schedule but to lose all the weight i would eat in one hour and so it looked like this where the eating was all here and all the rest of this was not eating and so this if if you're new to this do not overlook this this is very powerful in just propelling that weight loss it it I can't even believe what a difference this has made for me, both in terms of losing the weight and in terms of being able to maintain it. I find that maintenance is so much easier with this than anything else that I've done. Well, you know, I failed miserably at many maintenance programs. And this one really seems to be going 
so much better. It's just because I've, I've, I've basically kept st the structure. So if this was my weight loss structure, um, all I've done is I've loosened up just a little bit with this for maintenance. And, and you know, some people lose a lot of weight just doing this and then their maintenance might be eating in eight hours. So, you know, it kind of all depends on the, the person. But my, this is a wildly successful weight loss strategy for my husband. And there are people in the Eat Like a Bear group who are doing this and losing losing weight. Uh, so it just depends on you and also how like intensive you need to be with your weight loss. So mine looked like this for losing the weight. And so here again is the picture, which I know a lot of you guys have seen. And this is the postcard from Yellowstone um, video on Facebook, which you can find and my before picture and my after. And something notable about the after picture is, so I'm 140 pounds, and this is 30 pounds below my lowest weight as an adult. And so, you know how we all like have that weight that we're like fighting for over all the diets? Mine was 170 pounds, and I'm now 140. And so clearly this is working very, very well for me. And it's working so well for a lot of people. And so if you're just getting started, what you're going to do is two main things. You're going to you're going to cut your carbohydrates. And there's resources in the Eat Like a Bear group on how to cut your carbohydrates. You got to cut them, you got to cut them really low. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that's the breads, that's the potatoes, that's definitely like the sugared sodas, all the sugar stuff, all the starches are got, got to go. Got to go. But there's even some high carb other foods and there's resources so you can familiarize yourselves with carbohydrates. But you're going to do that and you're going to cut Cut definitely cut snacks off the beginning and end of the day, and that's going to reduce your eating window to um, something closer to this. At least some people get started and they might eat in eight hours, and that's a good way to start. But to be more intensive and to lose more weight, you want to get this window smaller. And so eight hours, I'm not sure I would expect to see a really big change, especially in people who've struggled with a lot of weight problems. Um, that you're probably going to need to be more aggressive than that. Now, there are some people who will just cut the snacking off the ends of the day and seek great success. Uh, that's um, those lucky people. <laughs> so probably people like my husband who have never had a super, super serious weight problem but need to like lose the 30 pounds. And that sometimes can be a very effective way. But if you're really needing to lose a lot of weight, Eight hours is a start, but you're probably going to need to ratchet it down. And it feels hard, like as you think about, like, how could I only eat in five hours? It's easier than you think. So I want you guys to try it and to, like, transition into that. If you see that eight hours is even, like, a little bit effective, go to five. Go to five. That's where you're going to start seeing the results. And then more results at five, start heading to one. Start heading to one. It's a huge, huge... I mean, I can't even tell you what a difference it's made for me. So I'm going to just see if I can. Okay. And Kathy. Well, thank you, Alistair. He is cute, isn't it? And um, yeah, Lisa's saying a lot of the, the low fat items have a higher carb content. Absolutely. And so, oh, Alistair on cue. <laughs> Someone say, I think you're cute. <laughs> so yes. say, thank Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Alistair's in working on a craft project. Okay. So, you're new, you gotta try it, you guys, you gotta try it. Intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, it just means that you're only eating in a certain block of time in the day. That's all it is, that's all it is. It feels hard, it's not as hard as it sounds, it really isn't. So I, I do want you to try it and get into the group and find resources on it and um, try it, try it. Okay, this was the game changer for me in, okay, in losing this weight. So you need to try it, try to, try to, try to, you know, get it working for you. Okay, guys, what else have you got for me? If nothing here tonight at six o'clock, I, we will do some kind of food thing and um, talk more about intention, bring ideas that you have about like journaling in, you know, intention and staying on track, keeping your, your brain focused. And um, it's, 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 it's very important and it's something I think we need to probably do a lot more of in the group is, is things related to journaling. I think in the end, that, that's going to be one of those tools that we take into maintenance and really 
get this working for us really well. Um, it, 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 I think it's an important um, tool to help keep our brains in the right place. So um, there's that. And uh, sorry, I haven't been better about this schedule and, and what I'm actually doing, but if you follow me on Instagram, I've kind of posted a little bit. It's not been my very best week. And I had this, I had a triple hernia surgery in December, which was, sounds crazy and big, but it actually should have been very straightforward. Uh, the, the hernias were not that complicated or anything, but um, I had complications and so I'm probably gonna have another surgery. And so we're kind of in that process of like figuring out what exactly happened so that we don't do like a big repeat on it. And so that's been like, like the anguish of like another surgery, but not, it's not even so much having another surgery as much as how are we gonna not repeat the first surgery and the problems of the first surgery. So in any case, um, I will see you guys tonight if you're around at six o'clock Pacific, um, nine o'clock, sorry, um, Eastern. And um, hey, Alistair might be with us again tonight. We'll see. And so for now, we will say goodbye to everybody. Bye. A little wave, you wanna wave? Okay, alrighty. And oh, here too, we get to figure out how to end